Hello everyone and welcome to another video and what is another episode of reviewing your gaming rigs. This is the series where I take a look at some of your submissions over on Instagram of your PCs. We take a look at your specs, the photos you've sent me and we talk about what could be improved if you want me to or we just laugh at the image that you've sent me because it's either something that shouldn't have made its way into my DMs in the first place or it's a picture of a potato from Google. But without further ado, let's get into it, pick a few rigs at random and begin the video, shall we? So, starting off, let's head on over to Instagram. Let's start with this build from Coroli. Apologies again if I pronounce any of your names wrong. I think that's just a given at this point. I'm not going to be able to say all of your usernames correctly, so forgive me for that. Now, this is Coroli's Green Beast, made up of an Asus Prime X470 Pro, Ryzen 2700X, a GTX 1070, and 16 gigs of 3200 MHz RAM, along with a Corsair CXM850. This is a pretty good rig. You can't really go wrong with that setup there. And what a nice place to start. The bottom right, I blocked some cables from view using a paper towel roll that I sharpened black. There's, there's always a catch. You get a nice rig come up on your screen here and there's always something hidden amongst it that doesn't seem quite right. But again, I love the innovation that some of you guys have come up with. Block some of the cables using an, oh, an empty toilet paper roll that I sharpened black. I don't know if we can see that in there. No, so I can't see it. So I'd consider that a success as far as cable management is concerned. So I just received an interesting letter in the mail. Apparently the uh, guarantee on my Dell personal computer expires on the 31st of July. Huh. Team know-how. No idea. Okay, we have a message from Armadi who says congratulations on the World Cup win. In 200 years of cricket history there hasn't been a match like this. Thank you. I don't follow the cricket, but I have heard that England won the uh, Cricket World Cup, so I guess that's something. Okay, next up we have a rig from Timt.s. Tim T.s. I wanted to submit my system for the Sunday Roast Your System episode. My specs are i7 7700K, MSI Z270 board, Corsair RM850X, 16 gigs of LPX RAM, Corsair water cooler and an MSI GTX 1060, a pretty good configuration so far. The pictures look nice, we've got nothing fancy in terms of RGB lighting, which I like, the all black system looks very good. But as usual with these nice looking rigs, there is a catch. The funny thing is my CPU cooler can't handle the heat output of the CPU. So when I play Far Cry 5, it immediately goes to 92 degrees Celsius, which is quite hot. I call the cables in the front of the case the bird's nest, because I couldn't fit them behind the other side panel. The 100R is a really terrible case for cable management. There we go. If you're thinking of buying the 100R, Timp suggests you do not. So all of the cables are all over the place. Now I don't think that's actually too bad. Okay, maybe maybe it's a bit messy there. But uh, all in all, I think that's a pretty good system. If you're having issues with your liquid cooler there, I'd suggest go back to an air cooler. I mean, it's not nuclear levels, but yeah, keep an eye on that. Next up, we have a laptop from Dragon Slayer 1227. It's an old Dell XPS M 1730. I love these old Dells. I've been trying to get my hands on one for quite a while now. This is the Core 2 Duo Extreme model, clocked at 2.5 gigahertz with 2 gigs of RAM and an 8700M GT. Not a PC, but thought you'd like the laptop. It's from 2007 and it can run Crisis. See, when you fire up Crisis, I believe at the start it says something about best played with Core 2 Duo or even Core 2 Duo Extreme. So I think when this came out, it would have been specifically marketed as well with Crisis in mind. And uh, yeah, these specs today don't sound like much, but you'd probably still be able to see 30 frames per second in Crisis with uh, 720p or 900p resolution. But I'm gonna look out for one of these laptops because I do love the old Dell XPSs. All right, next up we have a system from Not Jaheim. I think this is my system. It has a Ryzen 5 2400G, 8 gigs of DDR4, a Seagate 1TB SSHD, 500GB HD, 
an A320 in board, and an ASA ATX case. I would like to know what upgrades can be made. So you've got the 2400G, which has pretty good integrated graphics. Um, a couple of upgrades. I don't know the speed of your RAM. 8 gigs of DDR4, though. Perhaps 16 gigs would be a bit better for more modern games. But I think before upgrading the RAM, the addition of a graphics card would be a good idea. And in that regard, I think... With the Ryzen 5 2400G, you could probably go as high as a 1070, but I think a pretty decent budget card at the moment still is the GTX 1060 6 gig. You can find some pretty great used deals on them. Next up, it's Pranav Apu 472. My poor man's main, my poor man's mid-range portable gaming system. Core i3 6th gen, AMD Radeon 520, Windows 10 1080p panel. 1 terabyte HDD. But it's not that bad. Here's why it's not mine. Considering it's a laptop graphics card, it's doing an okay job, and 720p is looking good on this screen. You're making the best of what you've got there, and I cannot slate that. If it's playing all of the games that you want to play, then so be it. Just don't try and run something like Metro Exodus, because it might melt the system entirely. Okay, we've got a pretty clean setup from XHG here. The specs include a Ryzen 7 1700, 16 gigs of Patriot RAM, a GeForce 1660 Ti, a 600 watt EVGA certified PSU, a 120 gig SSD, a 1 terabyte Seagate Barracuda HDD, and an Aerocool Cyclone RGB chassis. Now, something has distracted me. That's a nice PC, um, a very nice combination. I'm sure you have tons of gaming fun on that. But I couldn't help notice the second picture you sent me, which. Uh, which, yeah. Do you know, it's funny because that's exactly what my body looks like under this t-shirt. So, uh, that that's, that's uh, amazing really. Yeah, I, I look exactly like that. I don't have man boobs at all. So, yeah. <laughs> Arthur Amy, or Arthur Amy, has sent me his setup. Pretty cool compact computer. Look at that. Apparently he's fit a 1050 Ti and an i5-2400 in there. Along with the Dell motherboard, I did think that was a Dell system. They make some pretty nice low-profile systems, Dell. And you can get them for quite a good price. I think that's a really nice little system. I'm a fan of small, compact systems like that that don't look like much from the outside, but underneath have more than enough power to handle all of your favourite titles. Another very clean setup now from Luke Fornan 7 Here we have the Ryzen 3 2300. I don't think I've ever heard of the 2300. Actually, 16 gigs of DDR4, a GTX 1066 gig, uh, H500i case, a 10 terabyte HDD, and 512 gigabyte HyperX SSD with a 550 watt PSU. He forgot the brand, but he said it's reputable enough. I believe you. It's okay. He's also got a PS4 hooked up to a 4K telly. That is a pretty clean looking setup there. The PS4 as well. I love my PS4 Uncharted. I'm playing it. All day, every day, okay, maybe not quite that much, but Uncharted, The Last of Us, brilliant exclusive titles. The PC is very nice. That is a great setup all round. I usually don't like RGB too much, but I think that's subtle enough to uh, look good there. Okay, so the next build from Tazen Sean. I think that's probably my worst pronunciation yet. This guy has built a Lego PC case which is pretty incredible, with a Xeon E3 1220v3, 12 gigs of DDR3, a 750 Ti, my favourite card of all time, a 250 gig SSD, and a Raid Max RX 530 SSPSU. Originally the power supply was outside the case, I had it on a little stand so it could breathe. The main thing though was a lack of pieces as well as huge dust build up, which caused me to put it back in a normal case. Look at that! That is like nothing I've ever seen. I might give that a go myself if you don't mind me nicking your idea. Because building a Lego case is something I've certainly never thought of before. Now the award for the best PC gaming chair I've ever seen goes to Alborot11 here. Big up the wicker chair. That's the MSI GE60 with an i5 4210H, 850M and 12 gigs of RAM. I've used the 850M. It's okay, actually. Um, as far as laptop GPUs go. I think I used it in a pretty recent laptop. I can't quite remember. 
but I know I've used it and it actually surprised me as to how well it performs. Moving on to the main rig here, I'm actually a little disappointed to see you've you've swapped out the chair there. I, I preferred the, the first one, but never mind, it's your choice. We've got the 2600X. We've also got a Vega 56. Brilliant choice. I've got a Vega 56 at the moment and a Ryzen 5 3600 in the build. The PC I put together the other day, I decided to keep for a while because I missed my old Ryzen 1600. So I thought, why not keep the rig with the 3600 in it? But I'll probably be changing the motherboard. I put the B350 in here from Biostar. A lot of you didn't like that choice. So I may swap it out for something a bit different in the future. But for now, it's doing a pretty good job. As you can see, it's all working fine. We've also got 750 watt PODA supply. I presume that's power supply, unless there's a new piece of technology that I haven't heard of. I hope you like it. I do like it. I think that's a very nice red themed system there. So Ben Dak V2 sent me this bright red PC that I'm gonna need to put my sunglasses on for in a minute. That's very bright, but it's very nice. I can see we've got the 1060 in there immediately. He did have an RX 570 that's been sold. This has also got a 2600X overclocked to 4 gigahertz with 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance and the 1060, yes. And he's changed the color to red with a magic marker. A lot of you are using these unique innovative techniques to modify your systems and I, I have to say I'm a fan. If they're not as clever as the toilet roll tube guy that we took a look at earlier, but again, it's a very nice modification there. If anyone should be roasted here, it's my hair, because I've just spotted it in the reflection of the camera and the iPad, and it's looking pretty awful these days. I need a haircut. I need to just shave it all off, but then my massive five head will be out. Okay, Chase Windsor has sent me his Ryzen 5 1600 build, and with one of the best photos I've seen all day along with it. Look at that handsome devil on the screen there. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Ryzen 5 1600, 24 gigs of LPX 2400 megahertz memory, an RX 570 and an MSI B350 mortar motherboard. We've also got the Thermaltake H17 and a 480 gig SSD with a two terabyte hard drive. Perhaps the Ryzen would benefit from slightly faster memory, but all in all, I think you're probably seeing decent performance on that rig with the 570, which by the way is a fantastic card at the moment. The price to performance on the 570 right now seems to be pretty good. It's still a fantastic 1080p gamer. JC is rocking the Ryzen 3 rig there with a dual monitor solution. We've got the 1200, the Ryzen 3 1200 at the moment. Stop going off. Why? Why are you doing that? Come back. The Ryzen 3 1200 at the moment is a pretty well priced processor. I think Amazon UK have it for about 50, 60 pounds, something like that. It was one of the very first and it still does a pretty decent job if you're looking for something that's relatively cheap. That's actually a very nice budget gaming rig. One thing I've noticed is that you said you've got one 8 gig stick of memory. I'd recommend swapping that out for dual channel RAM. It just works out a bit better with Ryzen. You should see slightly better frame rates too. But aside from that, yeah, it's a nice budget combination all in all. Johan here, or Johans, has sent me his uh, gaming setup. I'm not sure if that's an iPad Pro or a Microsoft Surface. Either way, it's running Minecraft beautifully. You've got the PS4 controller hooked up to that bad boy. A lovely combination. I hope that's not a packet of cigarettes in the background. That's a very naughty habit. <laughs> nice gaming rig. Minecraft. Beautiful game. Lovely setup. Moving on. FX.Josh here has sent me a picture of his Facebook Marketplace PC. For £450, he's put together an i5-8400, RTX 2060, and Corsair CX 550M based build. All the parts were from Facebook and he got the 1060, sorry, the 2060 for 200 pounds brand new, which is an absolutely incredible price. I've said it before, but Facebook Marketplace is a pretty good site to find PC parts at. I've heard a couple of stories maybe where people have sent money and then never received the item. To me that's silly. It's not really regulated like eBay uh, or Amazon, for example, where you can just file a money back guarantee claim something like that 
So if you are using Facebook Marketplace, then I'd recommend just shopping around for local deals as opposed to long distance ones. But all in all, that's a very nice setup. Especially for the price. Sooner song there with the bedside setup. Absolutely incredible. That's given me an idea all of a sudden. I need to drill a monitor onto that wall right now. I might go through to the neighbour's living room and they probably won't appreciate it. But perhaps if I knock on the door first and tell them what I'm about to do, they'll be okay with it. If I can find a way of attaching the PC on the wall as well. We've got a GTX 1060 in the old HP pavilion there, the three gig version. A lot of people don't like the three gig version of the 1060. To me, it was one of my first major upgrades. Um, I think I went from the 750 Ti to the three gig 1060 because in terms of how it compared price wise to the six gig version, well, I was saving 40 or 50 pounds, which at the time meant I came in under budget for my rig and it did pretty well sure it may have limited me as far as some of the higher settings were concerned but considering in some instances you can find a 3 gig 1060 now for the price of a 1050 ti then i really don't think they're all that bad of course if the difference in price between the 3 gig and the 6 gig version isn't that significant where you live then the 6 gig version would be the better choice all day long. I want to revisit that actually, the 3 gig 1060, so thanks for reminding me because I always found that car pretty interesting. Okay so I'm going to leave it there for today's one. In the next episode we're going to be including a ton more PCs. I'll probably try and fit perhaps 30 or 40 in. It's sort of like a mega mix style video. Um, but I believe I said in Saturday's video I've got quite a busy week lined up. Um, I've got a Ryzen 3 3200G test coming out very soon as well. I need to finish that off. But thank you for all of your submissions as always. Keep them coming. If you haven't been featured so far, you will be. I plan to get through all of these. With all that said and done, thank you for your submissions as always. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. I'll be back with a Ryzen 3 3200G test very soon. We're going a bit overboard with all the Ryzen 3000 based content, but... I'd like to cover as much as possible before I go back to a slightly older build in the one after that. So thank you as always and hopefully I'll see you all then.